everybody, this is Praxis and I'm back to working on the wall sheathing on this structure right here. You guys might recall that I uh, lined up the posts so that 10 foot boards could fit perfectly between three of them, but there is some uh, section at the end, there's a fourth bay, and there's some scrap that's created from filling in that last fourth bay. I've really been trying to minimize it, and this is the amount of scrap that comes out after you know I, d I do a couple of these runs. I get one of these for every one, uh, two of these runs that I do over here. So what I've been doing is uh, kind of planning where I'm going to be doing other posts based on the size of the scrap. I didn't need to decide exactly where the door was going to be uh, you know right away. So what I figured I'd do is I'd, I'd do you know a few runs of this and you can see I did like I don't know like six or seven runs up the side. Figure out like what kind of scrap I'm, I'm creating and then create the door space so that the door uses up the scrap perfectly in this kind of uh, you know a gap. Now I could have just arbitrarily moved the door over and I would have had some scrap I would have had to cut off. I could have had the door over this direction this stuff wouldn't have been long enough but I decided to wait and find out exactly what this was before I determined what I wanted this to be because the door really could slide one way or the other. And I've been trying to do that as much as I can because I don't know if I ex I don't know if I have enough of this stuff. I overbought, but then I decided to make the structure about a foot taller. So that uh, uh, kind of accumulates to four, uh, I'm sorry, two extra runs of boards around the entire uh, perimeter. And I forget how much extra I bought, so I don't know how much extra I'm gonna have. So I'm really trying to minimize scrap. And so far, with this technique, I have zero. Zero scrap. So it's going pretty well. This is the door frame right here, 38 and 3 eighths inches across. There's going to be a window next to it. There'll be one post right here, another post right here, and then there's going to be a window on the other side. And I'm still waiting uh, on the window on the other side. I'm holding off on that because once I start sheathing up this wall, I want to see if there's some sort of consistent size scrap that emerges and that will tell me, you know, where I might want to put the window over on the other wall so that I can really efficiently use the scrap. One other thing I wanted to mention is that to get the mark between this point and the point up there, you could put the board up and put a, you, know, you could put the level up next to it and figure it out that way, and that works pretty well. But the best way to do it is to use the plumb bob. That's that weight with the point at the end of a string, uh, uh, having it dangle down and, you know, marking the points at the top and the bottom. That gives you a, per a perfect perpendicular to gravity. Uh, kind of actually parallel with the direction of gravity. Uh, and it was a little tricky because we've had wind. Uh, even just a little bit of uh, breeze will throw the plumb bob around. So I was waiting for a while for there to be enough calm air that I could get that, that mark from here to here. And as soon as I got that, I marked it on the other side. Now I already said I don't know exactly where I'm going to put the window, but now I have a mark at the bottom on the other side and the top on the other side. And even if it's super windy, if I know I want to have the window one foot to the left of the mark, I can just you know, use the mark on the top and the bottom and kind of figure it out. So if you are in a situation where you need to take plumb bob measurements, take advantage of when, like right now, the wind stops, make your marks, and then if the wind picks up later on, you already got your marks, you don't have to worry about it. That's it. Thanks for watching.